I think I saw maybe two or three other times at the casino. Um, also, I think the way you described it is we had both lost all our money and we were going to dinner separately. I asked him if he was going to the VIP lounge. He didn't know what that was, so I took him to dinner on my comps. This is the plaintiff, Gail. She says she and the defendant were casino buddies, and she loaned him money to gamble in Atlantic City, and the louse won't pay her back. The guy posted videos of himself winning six grand. He owes her 2,080 bucks in loan she gave him, and he needs to pay her back here and now. So she's suing. This is the defendant, Maurice Dudley. He says he and the plaintiff were gambling together at Blackjack, and he was losing and she was winning big time. The plaintiff kept tossing him chips to play with because she liked his company. No one ever kept track of how much she gave him to play with. She never told him he would be required to pay her back, and he owes her nothing because she enjoyed playing cards with him. He's accused of not doubling down. All parties, please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is our presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Ms. Gale, you say that yes. Mr. Dudley, your gambling friend, <laughs> owes you $2,080. Tell me what happened. Um, yeah, so I enjoy going to the casino, and it also happens to be located right on the beach, so it's a perfect little getaway. Um, so I stay How much there time often. do you spend on the beach? A lot, during the sun. <laughs> during the sun, I'm out there. All right, go um, on. So I met him, I believe, for the first time. It was Labor Day weekend in early September. Um, we just kind of casually met at the elevator. We ended up having dinner together. And then we kept in touch um, via text. And I think I saw him maybe two or three other times at the casino. Um, also, I think the way you described it is we had both lost all our money. And we were going to dinner separately. I asked him if he was going to the VIP lounge. He didn't know what that was. So I took him to dinner on my comps. OK. Um, yeah, that was the first time I met him in the elevator. All right, and this was purely platonic. You guys were just friends, right? Absolutely. And, um, so how do you come to be in a position to be loaning him this money? It was in November, like November 17th. We we're both at the casino, and I had just won a bunch of money, and I guess he lost his money, so he asked me if he could borrow some money. Um, I sent him some money on Cash App, and then... Over the next day, um, he was at the casino again, and I actually took cash out of the ATM and loaned it to him, and I made it super clear that it was a loan. All right, I'm looking at the text, um, okay, 1200 and then November 18th, 1600 What do those mean? So I'm texting him, because we're at this point, we're at the casino together, so I'm texting him how much he owes me. There's one uh, text string that has all these different amounts. It's because we're sitting at the table and he's giving me money. So I'm reducing the debt and then... You owe 1500 Then on November 18th, 1600 1700 Okay, here's when we're at the table. And okay. he's, he's paying, like he's paying... Well, first I gave him some money, but he's paying me back. Every time he gives me a chip, I'm texting him. Okay, so that every time he gives you a total. what? A chip. a chip. Like he's so he's on November nineteenth, you gave him three hundred more because it says two thousand is your running tally, right. and then it says nineteen fifty, nineteen hundred, eighteen seventy five, blah blah blah, and then two thousand eighty. Exactly. Okay. Um, and he's. Uh, what did you he, think he, she meant when she kept texting you these figures, Mister Dudley? Your Honor, um, on this day, as I was winning, I was just, I was just giving her chips back. Every time she won, she was just giving me. X amount. I had no idea on the on the exact amount. Really? I thought it was all love, Your Honor. Oh, you thought it was all <laughs> love that she just wanted to pay your way? The first day I met her, I was leaving my room, and then um, she had, she had took me out to eat, paid for everything. She bought drinks. Well, so she I was calm. She didn't pay for anything. But then, why am I seeing these texts? You're not responding. What do you? What are these texts about? 
You know, you it, it, it seems to buttress what she's saying. Then she says, I came in the room and I put in 300 bucks online. I fell asleep playing. I woke up this morning. It told me I had an unfinished game session. I opened it up and it was a bonus round and I got 1700 LOL. The, do you think you might have a problem? No, I, I'm good. And what about you, Mr. Dudley? Do you think you have a problem? Your Honor, I'm, I'm really responsible. I will say definitely no. Okay. You got that cheese? I mean, she's asking you for the money. I'll have the cash in the morning, but I'll just hit the bank. I'm up and can't touch it. I see how you felt with that 10000 What is he talking about? Your Honor, oh, is that for her? Or me? Yeah, no, go ahead. You tell me, Mr. Dudley. Your Honor, when I was around her, she was just flaunting cash. I mean, thousands of dollars telling me she, um, she, she just got her body done, her butt done, and all this. So I was just, I was thinking she was up. I've never been around anybody that had so, so much amount of money. So I'm just like I was telling you, I was thinking it was all love. Oh, then he helpfully sends you a picture of him that he's playing blackjack and he's up on November 24th. Wow, nice. Send right, me those something. those are $100 chips, Your Honor. Right, and you say, send me something. I'm over here waiting patiently AF for you to pay me back. Send the money, please. This is all days afterwards. And you say, I'm going to send you 1100 next Wednesday. Did you, Mr. Dunn? No, no, no. Your Honor, no. Like, like I said. What happened to the 1100 that you said you were going to send her? I was just telling her, telling her whatever to get her off my phone line. Just to like the rest of the week before Christmas. Alone. My money is green. My word is all I got. Well, apparently not. Ooh, Yana, December second. No, no. Just one six. I'll be able probably to get it probably Monday before I get it and cash app. It's my bad. So late. I've been working sixteen hour days. Got to get back right before Christmas. I'll send six, then five. That Thursday I get. Pazaid, what's send six? Your Honor, like I said, I was just telling her whatever to get her off my line. By I don't know what I you're talking about. It's your idea to text her. You're not getting her off of a line. You're waking her up at 1144. And you're telling Yana. her that you want, in fact, I think you even are so helpful as to send a video of that. I'm not going to hold. You hear me? Big guy, shit. Bow! Ah! I did, I, did, I did win one day, yes. I was feeling myself, Yeah, yes. and you're letting her know about that, and you're telling her you're going to pay her, but then you see a better use for your money? Where was a better use for your money? Did you gamble it away and lose your winnings? Uh, Your Honor, no. I, um, I, so I you had the money, you, you just mean? didn't want to pay it back? Your Honor, I never thought I, I owed her anything off the I, You can like say I that to the cows come home. I'm asking you a specific question. You can say that, and I can believe you are my lion eyes that are seeing your text where you're saying, I'm up and I'm going to send you money. I'm going to send you six. What did you mean when you texted that? I'm going to send you six and then five. I meant by that because when she was up big on the tables, she was giving me cash. So I thought it would be love to send her something back. I, I was I was, I was, was filling up at, around that time. What is six? 600? 600, ma'am, yes. And then 500. Did you ever send her the 1,100 you keep promising? No, Your Honor, no. All right. Your Honor, if I may say one thing, I only met her about two or three times ever in my life. Yeah, she's like, an idiot even... for loaning you money. How'd that work out for you, sweetheart? You're an idiot for loaning her money, right? I agree. The question I, I have is not if she's an idiot for loaning you money. It's do you or don't you owe her? Was it a loan or was it just some gift because your sparkling, bubbly personality is just so coveted that someone has to pay you $2,080 just to keep you around because you're just that great. I have to see which of these it is. I can see very specifically this is a loan because she had the good sense to keep texting you what you were up and down as you kept paying her. And you don't say, what are these? What are these? You are not, you, you, you basically, your silence roars. And then you repeatedly say, oh, I'm up, I'm gonna pay you, I'll pay you that money, I'll send you $1,100. And what are you saying to me? Judge, but she's an idiot for trusting me? Is that your defense? Your Honor, as, as I said, I, I had plans on, on giving her something back after I was up, up like she was. How'd, the, was how'd that work out? She can't deposit your plans. What have you paid her back? A penny? Have you paid her $1? Your Honor, no. Oh. Well, then I guess you don't really have plans to pay her back. I'm ordering you to pay the plaintiff $2,080. Ms. Gale. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I don't care what you do with your life. If you want to gamble everything away, that's great. I'm not here to judge you. I am here to judge how you run your racket in terms of loans. Uh, very bad idea. It's good that you at least put some stuff in writing and that you're able to collect. But this is just a bad idea. Don't loan people you don't know money. Not the brightest. Two thousand eighty dollars verdict for the plaintiff. Lesson. Thank you.
So the plaintiff is finally going to get her gambling uh, debt repaid by the defendant, $2,080. The judge orders him to pay. Mr. Dudley, you come off looking pretty bad in this. She gave you all this money, and you haven't paid her back a penny. It's been months, you know? Like I said, you have any like I said, man, it wasn't alone, and I'm sticking to my story. It is what it is. It was all love. Like I said, it was it was more so a gift or more so just whatever at a time. I, I don't even know where she even got this, got this exact amount from, but. Well, are you, used to, are you used to having women come just give you gifts like that, money like that, uh, you know, out of Yo, the blue? If somebody gave me two thousand dollars, I'll use that to pay my rent or something, or if, I don't know, give me a dirt bike or something fun. <sighs> Why would I give it all and they say? Well, look, the judge says it's not a not a gift; it's totally a loan. Sorry, pal, you got to pay up. Gail, uh, as the judge said to you, uh, hopefully you don't do this again. You've learned a lesson out of this experience, am I right? Yes, sir, I certainly have. Thank you. All right, you're going to get all that money back and uh, <laughs> hold on to it, okay? Or go back I to the will. casino. Obviously, you like it there. You have good luck. I, obviously, am I right? I'll be in the summer. <laughs> okay, okay, good luck to you anyway. Doug, we've talked about it a thousand times on the show, but when you loan somebody money, if you don't get a written agreement, confirm it via text. It's such a good way of doing it. And you don't have to say, here's the contract, sign off on it. All you have to do is say, hey, I was happy to loan you the blank amount of money, and please, I would like it back within the next three weeks or whatever it is. If that person acknowledges it, that's it. And if the person doesn't acknowledge it, they sound shady. So that will help. If you're trapped on a desert island, which one of you is more likely to figure out a way to be rescued? Hmm. Well, I, I would say I'm the one who's probably more likely to get us rescued, but we're probably on the desert island because I refuse to ask for directions. <laughs> and you kept saying, stop and ask for directions. I kept saying, no, no, I'll, I know how to get there. I, know, <laughs> I, can, I can navigate. I know that the moss grows on the <laughs> north side of the tree. And I'll just, you know, I'll get squared away. Who do you think will, will figure out a rescue plan? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a joint effort would get it done, but uh, I would be able to keep us alive. Yes, I do, think, okay? I do think that you'd be more likely to figure it out. Right, but as far out. as getting us out of there, I don't know, maybe that would be, that might be above my pay grade. That might be. <laughs> right, the thinking part will be mine, but the execution <laughs> part will be yours. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I will execute the orders, get that stuff done, and keep us alive. Yeah. You find a way out. This is the plaintiff, Crystal Peterson. She says her tires were slashed by the defendant because the woman was mad she was with her ex-boyfriend. It's kind of ridiculous a grown woman would do something like this in a fit of jealousy, but it is what it is. Bottom line, she needs four new tires. The woman refuses to pay for them, and she's suing her for the $1,001.98 she's owed. This is the defendant, Brittany Clark. She says the plaintiff and she had a mutual acquaintance who was playing both of them at the same time. And she admits her emotions got the best of her, and she slashed the plaintiff's tires. She gave the guy they were both suing 500 bucks in cash to give to the plaintiff to get new tires. And she's not getting anything else out of her because $500 is more than enough to get used replacement tires for her car. She's accused of losing her cool. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant slashed her tires, and the motive was simply that the plaintiff is now dating the defendant's ex, and she's a jealous woman. The defendant says her boyfriend was dating both of them at the same time, and she admits her emotions got the best of her, but she paid this lady already, and she's not going to pay her anymore. It's the case of slashing and dashing. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Peterson. You are suing Ms. Clark for $1,001.98 in tire damages that you have sustained that you say are all as a result of her jealous rages. Tell me what happened. Okay, so um, one afternoon I came over to, um, to Marcus' mother's house, um, Ms. Marinette. Um, to Marcus um, ended up leaving and he said he was going to the store or something like that. Um, 
I was still sitting in, in the living room, and then next thing I know, his mother is coming downstairs, and she's saying, um, Brittany is by your car. I think she has something in her hand. I think she's slashing your tires. Oh, good Lord. Um, I stayed sitting. I didn't want to go out there because I'm like, if she has something in her hands, what am I going to? So Wait, You didn't go I to the window sitting. to see it or anything? Um, I did. After um, the mother did come down and she was at her door, I came behind her and I seen Brittany like driving away. Um, I didn't see her actually puncturing my tires but I didn't but your your friend's mom did exactly as well now yeah. is this a boyfriend sure. is this somebody who she used She's to date a friend of mine um i think she dates i don't know what she has going on with him he was just a friend of mine okay friends so. with benefits or, or just friends yeah i, I wouldn't say friends with benefits. <laughs> i mean Let's we're be honest. Here, yeah no that's I fine mean, I, i'm just trying to figure out so it's a casual thing Exactly. Okay, exactly. that's fine. That's fine, but it's a thing. Serious. All right, nothing so so your tires get whatsoever. slashed, and and did you know Brittany before this? No. Okay. I never, me and her. So what like happens? Did you call the police? It's very different. I'm 28. She's like in 40, in her 40s. So, I mean, we, no, we had no um, mutual friends, no Okay, um, gotcha. So did you whatsoever. call the police? Actually, I did not. His mother called the police because she was enraged that it happened at her place. And she um, actually took it upon herself to pay for used tires. But I drive a 2000. 2018, I have 60, I um, mean, I'm sorry, 30,000 miles on my car. So I have new tires on there. So I did not want So the mom used tires, bought you some used tires just so you yeah. can, right, all right. And yeah, then you had, had to go out and on. buy yourself a new set of yeah. tires, and that was $725.83, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes. And what happened with the police case? Um, it's still pending because um, the officer said they had a lot of stuff going on or whatever. Um, Ms. Clark, what's going on? Charges. She and I do know each other. We've met um, because to Marcus was trying to plot us against each other to fight. So everything that she's saying right now is bullshit. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. She, um, I gave him $500 for her little bitty Hyundai, Hyundai whatever the hell kind of car she drives. Okay, so Miss Clark, did you slash her tires? I did. Why? And I gave her $500. Wait, no, stop. You gave... To Marcus, five hundred. But tell me, yeah. Wh okay, but her. stop, stop, um, stop. Why did you slash her tires? She spit at me. When did she spit at you? Off the balcony at that house. That she's saying she didn't come to the window. She yeah. spit at you when you were doing she what? Spit. What were you doing there? Um, you know, I mean, he was supposed to be my man. How's that going for you? Him dating you, but dating oh, her? I have, and... a, I have an order of protection against him. How old are you? I'm suing him right now for busting out all my windows. Uh, oh, how old are you? 45. How old is Tamarcus? 35, 33. Okay. Ms. Clark, you slash her tires, and according to you, you give him $500 to give to her? Um, yeah, he robbed my best friend at gunpoint the day that happened. She has an order of protection against him. I'm sorry, did you this, give this, him $500 is... or did he rob your best friend of money or both? Oh no, both of them. I gave him $500 the next day. He robbed your best friend at gunpoint of what? What did he rob her at gunpoint of? All her jewelry, her phone. I can see what you see in him. I mean, he sounds fabulous. Yeah, I can see why you're having such a hard winner. time getting over him and going around, you know, as a town slasher. It makes total sense no, to me. He's a winner. Uh, he's yeah, a he winner. sounds like a real winner. <laughs> According to you, Ms. Pedersen, she slashes your tires a second time. Is that correct? So I'm getting my hair done um, right down the street from where his mother lives, like two blocks away, um, maybe three or four blocks away. I come out from getting my hair done from the shop. Two of my tires are slashed. And that's after they talked to her. Sweetheart, I would have done all four like I did the first time. <laughs> I don't give a shit about you. It sounds like you give a very, very big blank about her. 
because her tires are slashed again. If not you, then who? Maybe you only had time Your to Honor, do two. Your Honor, I've had a restraining order out on this man since December. I want nothing to do with him. I couldn't give a less about her and her ugly pop. You need to go get Girl, your hair done through. again. Miss Patterson, please so let I, me do what I, I do and please no, stop chiming in. Miss Clark, are you on something right now, sweetie? Did you take any drugs right. before court? No, I did not. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm in awe that the man I don't want anything to do with and his whatever she is are coming after me. Why I are you in them. awe? You admit to slashing your tires. That I paid for it, too. Why didn't you give it to her? It's her tires you slashed. You gave it to him? She's a coward. She would never come anywhere near me. Did he give you $500, Miss Pedersen? No. Okay, no, well, that's I the problem when you do it through a third party. Him. Why Bitch. didn't you do... No, no. That's on you, because you didn't pay the person that you owed the money to. All right, do you have a witness, Ms. Pedersen? Yes, I do. Okay, can I hear from the witness? Thank you. Okay, and who is this person? This is his mother. His mother. Okay, what is your name, please? My name is Marnette Gordon. Okay, Ms. Gordon, what is going on here, huh? It's like a circus. Right. <laughs> Tell me about it. Do you know Ms. Clark? Um, like, have you actually met her dating your son or not really? Not really. Okay, all right. And uh, where's He's your son? Too. Where's your son? My son? Yeah, is he here? Is he testifying? Yeah. Is he somewhere? Where is he? He's right here. Oh, let me hear from him. Can I hear from him? Okay. All right, awesome. Sure. What's your name? It's Marcus Blair. Mr. Blair, what the heck is going on between Ms. Pedersen and Ms. Clark? Were you dating both of them at the same time? Yes. Okay. And um, where did you meet Ms. Clark? Uh, Mickey's liquor store. Okay. And how long did you date Ms. Clark? About a year. Okay. How did you... Your, mo your mom actually witnessed her slashing the tires the first time or the second time? There was the first the time. Second. The first time. Did she give you $500 to give to Ms. Pedersen? No. I want to know what is going on. Tell me how crazy Ms. Clark is that she, you know, what is she doing to you? What is Brittany doing to me? Yeah. She's doing all types of stuff. Like what? Text messages. She calling me. I can pull up my phone right now and so 70 missed calls and, built, and, and block calls. Are, they, are you ass. dating her right now, I'm Mr. Not. Blair, or not? You're a lying piece no, of I hate you. I want nothing to do with you. And you're ugly as without your dread. Girl, look at you. OK. <laughs> All right, Ms. Pedersen, I'm going to ask you to stop. All right, I'm and sorry. Mr. Blair, I am going to ask you, did you hear about the second tire slashing? Yeah. And did you ever talk to Ms. Clark about that? No, ma'am. Okay. All right, let me hear from your mother. Go ahead and put your mom back on. Tell okay. me what you saw. Um, I happened to be in my bedroom. My bedroom is on the front. It faces the street where okay. you park. Okay. And I just, someone just told me to stand up and look out the window. So I stood up. I just told her. I looked out the window. <laughs> At that time, she was stooped down and she went to the, the driver's tire window, and I just seen her, you know, her hand motion. Right. Then she, she kind of walked, crawled over to the front tire where she I stuck crawled. it really hard. Okay. And then she drove and got in her truck and drove off laughing. Okay. Now, d you didn't witness the second tire slashing, though, right? No. Okay. All right. There was no second. Yeah, tire there was. Slashing. If not you, then who? Some other magical tire slashing I, I fairy know. who's losing her mind know. over the guy? Man. Of course it's you. It's Verdict for the plaintiff $1,001.98. Thank you. <laughs> I got to tell you, this case, when the defendant admits to slashing one tire and then the second tire, the slash there is in dispute, that defendant has credibility problems. Judge John is very physical with the use of his hands when he talks. Does this ever create a problem, such as when dining or driving? Huh. When driving, I have only one problem. 
the backseat driver who's <laughs> sitting, sitting in the next seat to next to me. <laughs> backseat driver you know, is defined as someone who gives unwanted advice or tries to control something that should be controlled by someone else, basically, okay, right? Okay, okay, uh, all right. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged, because uh, uh, <laughs> I am for, in perpetual fear when you are at the I wheel. I know, right? They, yeah. They, 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 this will be your last moment, because right. I'm the guy driving. It's true, you do use your hands uh, a lot. I always see that as a very Hispanic uh, thing or a very yeah, Italian thing, but you right. actually really do use I your... I do, but I don't knock stuff over at the dinner table, do you I? You are the most brusque individual that That's I have ever... That's the word you always use, brusco. Brusco. You say, por qué you're, you're, tan, tan like, you're like a Neanderthal, just like traipsing through, wow. knocking things over, but not, but not because you're talking with your hands. That's just because you're indelicate yeah, as hell. I agree. Right. Guilty as yep. charged. This is the plaintiff, Suzanne Kontsevich. She says she rented a townhouse from the defendant, and when her husband passed away, she moved out. The defendant's being petty and vindictive because she won't return her full security. She left the place in good condition, and her list of damages is downright ridiculous. She's suing for $2,650, the amount she's still owed. This is the defendant, Lisa Marzorio. She says the plaintiff's husband backed into the garage door while it was closed, damaging it. The defendant also says there was a laundry list of broken things in the place, and there's no way the plaintiff's going to get another penny out of her. She's accused of seeing things slightly differently. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that the defendant is heartless, uh, just kept her security even though she had to move out of the townhouse she was running from the defendant after the plaintiff's husband passed away. But the defendant says that her husband backed into the garage door, breaking it, and she's not returning anything because it has to be fixed. It's the case of the fix is in. Thank you, Douglas. All right, Ms. Konsevich, you are suing your former landlord, Ms. Marzario, for the balance of a security deposit that you're owed, which, according to you, is $2,650. And you, Ms. Marzario, are keeping it because... Why are you keeping it? Because there was a lot of damage. That damage that far exceeded the balance of the security money. Okay. So let's start with you telling me what that damage is, and then I'll give you a chance, Ms. Konstovich, obviously, to tell me why that's unreasonable. So let me okay. hear from you first, Ms. Mazzario. Okay. Uh, first, uh, the garage door was damaged, Her and she agreed that her husband had backed into it. Okay. So hold uh, on, and, and that... do we have a picture of the garage door? I don't know that I sent a picture, but uh, but Susan agreed and acknowledged that her husband had done it for the second time, actually. Okay. <laughs> now, let me ask you, do you have a receipt for the repair of that door? Yes, and I did submit that. And that quote is for how much? Uh, it was, I believe, $450. All right. Do you dispute the garage door, Ms. Konsevich? I do not. All right. Well, that was easy. Let's go to the next thing. Go ahead. Uh, there were lots of, like, gouges in the walls. It wasn't just like where you had to just repaint. There were literally gouges in the walls and on the base trim. And I tried to take some photos and I submitted those as well. Okay. So that would be these pictures, which are very kind of hard. That's it's, hard to capture, it, I know. Yes, it is. But uh, there were a ton of them throughout the house. And that, see how the molding was like that? It was throughout the entire home. And um, she did have a little dog, which I had agreed to, um, but it was just too many. And so, and the painter actually charged $850 because he had to do it in two separate days because he said he had to, I guess, spackle and fill everything the first time and then um, touch up paint, I guess, the next time. I don't know. Do you have a receipt for the painter? Yes, and I submitted that as well. Yeah. All right. What would your response to that be, Ms. Konsevich? I could, it could have been there when I moved in. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how that could have possibly happened. So... Um, it wasn't painted before I moved in, so I can't say how, how long it's been there. Do you have pictures or, of how, how it how looked it before, when she moved in, Ms. Yes, Marzari? Yes. Okay. They were uh, labeled the before, and it was, it was almost in perfect condition. This is where I only have the yeah. three pictures. Do you have any more okay. than that that show me the condition From, of the walls and all that? 
No, okay. I don't. All right. Nope. But, Did, uh, okay. Okay. So what, what is the next item that you held her deposit for? The sofa. Um, she had had a blanket on the cushions and once she finally removed it, I saw that the two cushions were pretty much destroyed. It was like a microfiber uh, sectional. And um, I didn't know what happened to the cushions, quite honestly, but they were, the, the fabric was destroyed. They couldn't be cleaned. Uh, but but Sue did mention uh, previously uh, that her dog would lick the cushions. And that's, I assume, maybe from the dog's saliva, what creates, so, so there's like a sheen on the two seat cushions um, so the whole sectional looks right. Nice. So, the, but the sectional was purchased what year? Uh, when uh, 2013 or 14, whenever I right. bought so the it's a home. seven-year-old sectional, and um, you are suing, you are demanding from her security deposit the value of it at the time that you bought it, as opposed to the value of a seven-year-old sectional. Well. True, but and that's I not how it works in court. Just okay. so you know that, yeah, okay. you don't get because then you got seven for years out of it, and court is mm -hmm. about making you whole. So it's mm -hmm. the value is the that you get is the value at the time of the loss, and the value at the time okay. of the loss would be a seven-year-old. What's the market value of a seven-year-old couch? It wouldn't be the price you paid seven years ago. What happened to the couch, though, Miss Konsevich? Um, well, she's, it's true. I do have I have a six-pound um, Yorkie, and he would just. Like, like lick it. Okay. I mean, it didn't All look right. like that. What else did the doggy do? That little six pound Yorkie. What, what else did that little rascal do, Ms. Uh, Marzario? Yep. It's just, there's a huge stain right next to the bed. And I had it cleaned twice and the guy said, it's not coming out. He doesn't know if it was vomit or something that sat for quite a while, but he said it's not coming out, so. How much did you withhold for that? Uh, I put $250. I didn't get a price yet to, replace the carpet. Okay. What else are you withholding for? The faucet in my kitchen. She replaced the faucet uh, without even telling me. Uh, and then um, she replaced it with a faucet that sits too high. So there are plantation <laughs> shutters uh, in my kitchen <laughs> and I cannot shut the shutter. Right. So now so. she has to replace that faucet. Uh, why did you yep. replace the faucet, Ms. Konsevich? Because it was broken and I thought it was doing a nice thing by replacing did it. Did you ever complain about it? it? Is there any record of you ever saying the faucet is broken? versus that you wanted a different faucet because well, no, usually if broken. a faucet's broken you tell your landlord and they pay for a new faucet and they right. would probably I not get you that, one that I looked had... like that <laughs> no no i didn't care how it looked it just wasn't functioning so i thought i was doing something nice by replacing it on my own without having to right her or with. or the other way for me to look at it is you put in a new faucet without permission and now the 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 you know that's a detriment to her. That's not a nice thing. She's got to replace that faucet, you see. So um, that does How much did you pay for that, Ms.? Um... Uh, I got a price from a plumber, uh, including the new faucet and the installation. It was going to be $586. Did you actually pay that? Because that's absurd. Is, is... is it absurd? Yeah, no, I think I it's super high. I had a beautiful high. faucet, though. I had a beautiful no, faucet I, that's... prior to. Okay, so, okay, so it's a cooler faucet. Prove to me faucet what that faucet that you had that that price would be uh, accurate. Like, what faucet well, did you have? Do you have any proof of what it was? Uh, I probably could find proof, but not right now. I don't, yeah. It was a beautiful faucet, though. Well, it might have been a I beautiful didn't... faucet that didn't work, or it might have been a beautiful faucet, or it might have, but if you if you want $500, you got to prove $500. So what else are you keeping her deposit um, for? Okay, so in the uh, spare um, bedroom upstairs, um, the end table next to the bedroom, the bedroom top, there's a picture of it. All the paint is like totally scratched off. I don't even know if the dog did that or her daughter did I that. Doubt I doubt the dog no did that. But like, I know. but what is what is that furniture like? It's it's a espresso wood. I don't know espresso color wood. How long has that been in there? Uh, since 2014, I think. All right. So, but I mean, it was in perfect condition. I mean, there was okay. not a nick on it. How did the paint come off the top like this, Miss Konsevich? I have no idea. I mean, it's not like my daughter scratched at it or my dog scratched at it. I mean, I don't know how that happens. Why wouldn't it suffice to just refinish the top? Why, That's what why I said. are you you're withholding well, the we, amount that you paid for it seven years ago again? You're doing that thing. Right, but it was it was only I had gotten it on on clearance for two hundred and twenty one dollars. So I thought by the time I pay a painter to come in. And okay, I so if you've got it on clearance for $200 and you've had it for uh -huh. seven years, then mm -hmm. what she damaged is a seven-year-old $200 clearance item. 
Okay. So I will However, allot something for okay. that, okay? Mm -hmm. What you could have gotten in the open market for that $200 clearance item. Now, let's talk okay. about kitchen tabletop. That's where we yep. are. You know, it's just, it looks like she never put anything down to protect it. So now it's all discolored and peeling. And again, I, I should have had pictures because the, the, the furniture, like she commented with her husband when she toured the townhome in order to rent it, everything was just, it looked like it was out of a magazine. It was in perfect condition because I had only used the furniture for about a year because I only lived there for about, about a year and a half. How long did she live there? Uh, a total four of years. four years. Okay. Do you have evidence of, of the cost of the table? Is that in that yes. receipt? So yep. you are suing for the counter height dining table entirely, its entire price, $515.95. Yeah. What you paid for it in 2013, right? So there's no dispute that the amount of the security deposit is $2,650, right? That that's what was, um, that's the yep. security deposit. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. So according to you, with your figures, you would be out how much, Ms. Marzario? Uh, about $2,300. In addition to the two thousand to the twenty six fifty, right. Yes. So according to you, your damages are five thousand something. All right. Absolutely. I find that you're incorrect about that because there's several things that I'm adjusting that we've mm -hmm. already talked mm -hmm. about, such mm -hmm. as depreciated values of things. Um, mm -hmm. And when I do my math, you're entitled to mm -hmm. two thousand thirty two. Okay. So I am ruling that you're entitled to keep two thousand thirty two, but I'm ordering you to return to Ms. Konsevich the remainder, which would be six hundred and eighteen dollars. And that's because there's some big ticket items, Ms. Konsevich. There's the garage is $450. Uh, even if I depreciate all that furniture, which I am severely, you know, I'm depreciating it because it's seven-year-old furniture, what would you get for it in the open market? It's much less than what she's asking for. There's still the issue of the faucet uh, having to be changed, which I, I didn't give her the 500. I lowered that by whatever I think a plumber will cost and a decent faucet, all right? Uh, and even doing that, you still owe her a bunch of money from your security deposit for the damages. So uh, the remainder is $618 verdicts for the plaintiff. So the plaintiff prevails in this lawsuit. She gets $618. That's uh, for Ms. Konsevich. Uh, let me ask you, Ms. Uh, Marzario, how do you feel about that? You okay with it? I'm okay with it. I mean, I, I don't think she deserves any of it, but I'm okay with it. Well, the judge went over itemized, you know, as mm -hmm. you know, detail mm -hmm. by detail, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what her rough justice has come to, so you're going to mm -hmm. have to accept it. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's see how the plaintiff feels about it. Ma'am, how are you feeling about it, Ms. Konsovich? Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I mean, she wasn't going to give me anything back, so $618 is better than nothing at all, so I'm pleased. Okay, in any event, that's what you get, and that'll have to wrap it up for you. Okay, good luck, and uh, congratulations. This is an interesting case, Doug, and it really raises an issue that we've seen in a lot of cases. You know, the judge in any case, and certainly Judge Millian, cannot rule just out of sympathy. That doesn't mean a judge can't be empathetic, but in terms of saying, I'm so empathetic to you that I'm going to rule for you even though the, the law doesn't allow, that's just not the way court works. Hey judges, are there any circumstances that an as-is sale could be overturned? Well, yeah, you know, the phrase as-is means you can't complain about the quality. You can't just have buyer's remorse and say, ah, I changed my mind, I want a refund. Right. Um, it means any defect that is there and was always there, you're not going to be heard to say, yeah, now the scratches really bother me or right. whatever. Uh, it means you better make sure it works before you leave and you, and you take it. Now, the exception to that, of course, is fraud. If the person knows the thing doesn't work, right. if the person knows that there's something wrong, if the person lies about, oh, I just put in a new... Uh, they knew that the house was haunted. Right? <laughs> something like that. Right? If the person knows that, uh, you know, like uh, they say, I just put four... Uh, I just change the engine and then it turns out that the engine hasn't been changed. Right. If they lie or misrepresent, things, right. that's that that's fraud right. and so fraud is always an exception. But usually it's a long shot when you say... When it's usually a long shot because most people who want to return something that's as is want to return it because they've changed their minds. They've right. had buyer's remorse.